Friday night. Got my bag on me. Just in case, just in case. Uh, looking at this story. Um, of course, on Polo, I got all my news. <laughs> I, I, don't, I don't really, I mean, it's a good place to go for news because it, it always has the, uh, it always has like the top things that are going on in the, in the fake, uh, in the fake show, you know. This guy here, uh, that starved to death. At first, when I first started seeing the story, I thought it, he was one of the, uh, the, the supposed fake 4chan people that they arrested. I thought they were just trying to, like, scare you even further. And no one was scared. That whole PSYOP thing with the uh, shit wood. Nobody's scared about that. They memed it for a couple of days, and then, you know, nobody talked about it again. As rightfully as, as, as it should be, you know. It was fucking stupid. Hey, how you doing? I didn't know that was you behind me. <laughs> I don't, you know how I, aware I am of things. Yep. I'm, I'm very hyper-focused and ignore people. <laughs> Have a good night, man. See you later, Chris. Oh, that's my neighbor behind me. But, um, yeah, no one cared. No one cared. They, I, I was thinking that there was something deeper than just scaring people. I was like, there's got to be something more to this. They're trying to wrap up their... Maybe they're uh, they're they're psyop or whatever, but sometimes I give them too much credit because these guys, these newer uh, spooks, government agents, G-men, they're not the G-men of like my dad's era. There's a lot of diversity hires. There's a lot of like just people that they just don't have the juice that the old guys had. Uh, and they're uh, and they're easy to spot, and all their their psyops are bullshit. Like, you know, most average people. Well, I shouldn't say that. Most average people think they're totally real. That's a problem, isn't it? But uh, someone someone mentioned that in in a thread that how the CIA is really interested in schizophrenics, and um, there are people that wanted to talk to me back in the day. Uh, I guess my, my sister was saying, I think my, my older sister had talked to some people that she said was, were interested in talking to me. Uh, or she, I remember her telling me this one time that, uh, I don't think they're government people. I don't know who they were. She's like, yeah, I'd, you know, I was talking to whoever they were and they were, they were really interested in meeting you and, and, and talking to you. Uh, you know, cause Research purposes, I guess. I don't know. Um, now I'm a lot more high functioning. Uh, almost to the point where it's like, you know, I I I, uh, I suffer more from well, suffer is a is not the word I would use. I'm fucking fine, but uh, the DID thing is more the problem uh, for me. I was diagnosed with that in 2012. Not as much fun as girls on TikTok make it seem. They're all fucking liars anyway. Uh, I'm just, fuck them. Today on, today on Sasha, and Sasha doesn't like hamburgers, like fuck you. I know they're kids, I shouldn't say that. They're just kids looking for attention. And, and especially on a place like TikTok, like everybody's trying to out scream each other for attention. It's, it's so sad, but uh, Things have kind of devolved into, says the guy on social media. But um, yeah, uh, people, doctors and um, researchers and stuff are always kind of interested in, in talking to you. When I was in uh, the hospital, I had a series of dudes and a couple of women, I think, one after another. Like every day, there was like three different people I'd talk to, like doctors that would come in from other hospitals or other places. And they'd talk to other people too, it wasn't just me. Like they were there and um, I th I mean, maybe some of them might've been students uh, or something to study people. I mean, there's probably some of that going on. I don't know what you sign up for, 
when you're you're in the nut hut necessarily like like i was signed into it by my family well i don't know how it happened it happened that i went to do a psych eval and from the psych eval uh the lady who was uh the clinician who was doing the evaluation uh immediately called an ambulance <laughs> uh i didn't think i seen anything too outside but they did something that that got that going but um, so I'm not exactly sure if it was the state put me in. Whatever the case, I mean, I don't sign anything. I don't see anything. So I don't know what you're agreeing to when you're in there. Uh, so I mean, I don't know. They bring um, they bring people to look at you, right? And um, so the government, I guess, uh, the CIA, has been trying to figure out the connection between schizoaffected people and their uh, tighter connection to what would be considered a spiritual awakening. Like uh, why they, they tend to go uh, more hard in the paint on that. And, and then this has been going on for years and years and years and years. You always hear about schizophrenics yelling about demons or God is talking to them. I think they're God. I think, this has always been in place. Okay, but now that the spiritual awakening is happening on a greater scale and it's affecting the general public, now they're starting to worry. So like, all right, well, let, let, let's start rounding up the schizophrenics and see what's going on try to figure out, because they're kind of like the ground zero, I guess, of why are these people uh, starting to see through our bullshit? Now, uh, schizophrenia has, they have things where... Uh, when you have symptoms or you have what they call a breakdown or whatever they call it, a, a psychotic break, it's a break from reality. And that's a, uh, everything's wordplay. Everything's, the words are the ones you choose for a reason, you know? Now, break from reality, this is what they call reality. All this horse shit out here that isn't real. Uh, so what, what, what's really happening is you're seeing beyond it. You're seeing through the veil becoming aware of a, a spiritual world. Uh, you, start have, uh, you start interacting with demons, like, like I do, you know? And, um, and you become uh, more spiritually aware. You understand, we don't, might not understand it, but you have an awareness that there's like a God. And all this kind of stuff happens. Um, so they want to figure out why. Because they, it's not good for them, right? They want to stop this kind of thing. They don't want people to, to be able to do this, right? Because it, 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 you know, obviously they don't want that happening. So I don't know if this was some kind of message with this guy. I've seen uh, schizo schizophrenic people killed before in like similar ways. Uh, you see a lot of things where they show up on the scene where they're having a psychotic break and they shoot them. I've had that, you know, I've had that exact scenario here. I made a video about it. I tried to fucking tank a house. I, I was walking home one night over by my house, and you know, these kids, these, these Howley kids, were just giving me shit, right? So I'm like, uh, I just ignored them, you know? And they're all in the yard. There's like seven of them. Because people like that usually don't, they don't come at you one on one, they need a gang, you know? So these uh, Howley kids, one of them, why? What happened is it all started because one of them ran up behind me. I didn't see him coming. And he swung over my head. Right? Like, just buzzed me. For no reason. Like, I don't know who this fucking guy is, you know? And he comes up, comes up and just buzzes me, right? So I'm like, oh, all right, whatever. I got to chase him down the street. He goes running down the street. So I'm thinking, he's probably some crazy person, right? So uh, I get up close to him. He runs into a yard. And he comes out of the yard with all these guys. And they start, you know starting shit with me by myself right so I'm just ignore him just ignore him just ignore him so I just ignore him walked home kind of forgot about it but it must have bothered me because I fell asleep and something happened when I was sleeping I think it made me really mad so I woke up and did a bunch of really weird shit and then went charging down the street in the direction of the house uh fucking screaming bloody murder about what I'm going to do to them. So I get to the house 
and this is how I hurt my leg too. This is a funny story. But I was, I, uh, I was screaming for them to come out. All these, the F word, the this word, the that word, the N word, and um, I'm jumping on the cars out in front of the house. So then I'm like, I'm, I'm gonna go over this fence. They have a fence in front of the, in front of the house. Well, this is what happened first. I'm running up on the house, and they have a fence out in front of it. It's like a, like a, it's not like a. A picket fence it's like a full fence i walk by it all the time i point it out next time i'm over there so in my mind i'm like i'm gonna take a running jump hop up on the fence and just go right over and go into the yard you know well i hadn't done something like that in a very long time and in my mind i saw it but i didn't quite make it i put my hands up and went to go over the fence and smacked my knee on it on the fence really fucked up my knee i limped for a long time and uh, just screaming at the house, you know, people come out. I saw a couple of people peek out from on the window, and nobody's coming out there. Cars were driving by, looking at me, and I started charging at the cars. I was just fucking crazy. I went into some fucking. I want to kill these guys. I would have murdered them. I would have. I would have. You know, it's. it's I wouldn't. I would've, wouldn't have really murdered them, but I would have tried to attack them. Who knows? Maybe they had a gun and they could shoot me or put me down. So the cops showed up and they were really cool. Uh, this kind of had happened before. <laughs> this is the first time this kind of thing happened. It doesn't happen a lot though. It takes like something to trigger me to do that kind of thing. Uh, I've never really hurt anyone, um, you know, during these kind of freakouts, but you know, just don't, don't, fucking give me shit you know leave me alone we're just walking through the neighborhood so uh the cops like uh, you know this is um these these houses here these buildings they're airbnb so they're so the people that rented them that you're having trouble with they might not even be here you know and uh he was very cool about it now i was in a, a quite a state i had i painted my face uh <laughs> It was, it's embarrassing, but you know, you do some fucked up shit sometimes. Uh, and I had like, I don't, uh, well, I don't know. This is, this is a, this is going on the record. So yeah, I was just kind of out of my mind. That's kind of out of my mind. I didn't have like a firearm or anything. I wasn't like, you know, I wasn't anything crazy like that. Like, I, I don't, I don't think I could have hurt anyone anyway. So, uh, you know. The cars are looking at me, so then I start yelling at them for looking at me. Well, of course they're looking at me. I'm fucking losing my... I'm trying to tank a house, you know? I'm trying to tank a house. And, uh... That's the thing. What I, I, I've been in that, those kind of situations here, like, twice. And that's eight years. And that's a, that's a long time. It used to happen to me all the time. Back in, uh, in Boston. I'm not all the time. But I get into those states and I decide to fight traffic with a fucking bag of batteries or something. I'm lucky I didn't, you know, no one shot me or killed me. But this is what, what I'm saying here. This is what it's all about is that that guy that got, that uh, was starved to death. That could easily be me. If those cops showed up on the scene that day over there and I had the wrong guys, thank God I hadn't like good, good cops. Uh, they, they could have shot me, you know. I had something in my hand. I was crazed. Uh, I looked crazy, right? And I don't know if I could... If they fucking drew on me, I don't know if I could blame them. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm being a problem. I'm, I'm a problem, right? So, I don't know. Let me walk a little bit here. So yeah, so th those kind of things, um, I see how they can happen, you know? And uh, or I could have easily been, you know, thrown into jail and have had the same situation uh, this guy had, you know, just, so it can happen. That's why I try to, I try very much to control myself. Um, and not fall into those things. I developed a lot of tricks over the years how to deal with it, like how to deal with those kind of things. I was diagnosed very late in life. So by the time they got to me, I already had a whole toolbox of things that I would use to 
circumvent some of the more serious, uh, you know, symptoms and shit. And then uh, as I got into adulthood, I was in, involved in music and I was in bands, like most of my adult life and that included uh drinking a lot and doing a lot of drugs because you you know it's just a lifestyle right but what that was doing was covering up all the stuff so when that started getting too bad and the doctors told me uh yeah you're gonna die if you don't if you don't fucking chill out and they're like just take this weekend try to stay home don't go in this is when i was you know partying uh I can't, I can't do things like that though. I either have to get all in or all out. I'm extreme like that. So I figured out a way to stay home. And the answer was my money. What I would do is when I get money, I'd spend it immediately. So I couldn't go out crowding in the clubs or, or buying booze or drugs or whatever. And it worked. Uh, so I quit everything, like everything all at once. And, uh, I, like, I would smoke back then, but I only smoked because I was doing the stuff, and when I stopped drinking and doing drugs, I stopped smoking. I started smoking when I moved here again. But, uh, yeah, I, uh, I was completely sober, and then all the shit came back. All the, the quote-unquote mental health issues. They're actually spiritual health issues. There's no, there's no such thing as mental health. You know, that's it. That's, it's a fake industry built on uh, erroneous science, in quotation marks, made to prop up several industries and maintain control over the people who might cause them problems because they see through their bullshit. So, um... All this stuff started roaring back. And it had been so long since uh, I'd used the tools that I had developed to uh, help me with this kind of stuff. I kind of freaked out. Like, I freaked out. I, they, they, they surmised that... Uh, well, I don't like people running up behind me. That's weird. Um, why, why? Why would they do that? Go, don't go run into the mall, you fucking idiot. But, um... Oh, I hate people. I was in the middle of saying something, then I have to, I have to stop because someone's charging me from behind. Oh God, I hate these fucking robots. I really do. Anyway, oh yeah, I started freaking out. I had a nervous breakdown from what they're saying. At some point, they didn't know when I had it, but I had some kind of nervous breakdown, and uh, that's when uh, I went to talk to the clinician for a psych eval, and then I went right in. And I remember the first day I went in there, I'm sitting in the waiting area and, um, you know, just waiting to be processed or whatever, taking the laces out of my shoes and uh, locking the doors behind me. You can't go anywhere without them locking the doors immediately behind me. And there's this older woman in her room screaming about Sirhan Sirhan. Sirhan Sirhan! Sirhan Sirhan! And I'm like, sure, yeah, sir, he's the guy that killed, the guy that killed Kennedy, right? That whole psyop. You know, the fake guy that fake killed Kennedy. Then they had a fake guy fake kill him. And that was the first, uh, I'll give you a little look over the budget. I'm going to hold on the camera though, so. I really can't see anything because uh, it's hard to see up here with these hedges. I think they do this purposely because the fucking animals here would be throwing things down on people. Guaranteed. Yeah. You, you can't have nice snakes. Not everyone's ready for civilization. Not everyone's ready for civilization. But uh, it was, what it did is it, it hearing that, uh, was it like a precursor or, an, or, or a, a, you know, a preview of what I was going to run into when I was in there because everyone... And they're all cool. I got along with everybody. Uh, they were all into what would be considered conspiracy theories. All of them. All of them. So we're discussing all this stuff. And this is in 2008. 
You know, I'd, I'd been studying a lot of stuff for years, so I knew a lot of stuff about this. You know, prior to this, I was going through this whole deep dive on the Rothschild, the Rothschilds. I started talking with the guy in there about it. And they, they knew a lot of stuff, and we were just exchanging information. So, like, uh, that's kind of weird, right? How we're all, like, uh, we're all challenging the reality that we live in, right? The reality. Everybody in there, the ones I talked to anyway, there are some people that wouldn't leave their room. We are all, we all of the same mind that uh, something was afoot at the Circle K. You know? Is that just coincidence? Oh yeah, yeah, of course it's coincidence. So uh, what, what do you think? Blah, 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 blah. Shut the fuck up. Shut the fuck up. Take your pills, go in your room. He sleeps 16 hours a day. Well, he's not talking about 9-11 anymore, is he? That's success. Just keep throwing pills at him. Oh, we got these new pills in. The, the, the sales girl's really nice, gave me Lakers tickets. Try this on him. Just throwing pills at you, throw pills at you. I came out of there with 11 prescriptions. I didn't know any better, because I didn't understand uh, that doctors the whole medical thing is a fucking fraud. I didn't know that at the time. You know? It's just a bunch of Khazars in white dresses uh, rubbing their hands together. I didn't know that, though. So I trusted them. And they almost killed me. They almost killed me. Several times. It's not mental illness. It's spiritual illness. They have used this method of keeping us unaware of who we are and what we are for too long and it's starting to break it's starting to come apart people are starting to see through it uh, they say uh, schizophrenia inclined people or, or whatever schizo effective are closer to God I don't think that's the case at all I think I think we're just it's not a condition the condition is seeing through the veil the veil that separates uh, of the bill that's put here uh, of this fake world and that keeps you from understanding your own divinity that's dissolving they've run this game way too many times they've run this whole fucking situation it's a cynical thing it, it's happened you know sometimes when they talk about in the Bible you, uh, you talk about the Bible you talk about uh, revelations and the end times it, it sometimes to me it feels like it's reporting something that already happened you know I think that might have already happened and it happens again and again this is a scenario that plays out and once it gets to a certain end they have the end times and then they start all over again and this goes on and on the recyclical nature of this whole place you know but things are different this time um, I had someone explain it to me that's into astrology and stuff they're like it's the end of an a cycle but it's also the end of something else it's the end of two different things happening at one time that we've never had before um, so this is supposed to be different and there are things happening that couldn't have happened in those other resets because if they did we wouldn't have had a reset do you know what I mean things are different this time things are different We're getting out of here. We're all getting out of here. And I'm getting out of the international marketplace. I like this place though. It's cool. It's cool in the morning when no one's around. It's, it's cool now though. There's not a lot of people around. Nice and breezy in here. But yeah, that just caught my eye. The uh the poor dude that died. But then it's like, I think the poor dude that died, it's probably all fake. In fact, of course it's fake. What the fuck are you talking about? What's the message though? Are they trying to, what message are they trying to send? Are they trying to tell people like me, uh, stop posting things about Israel online? Like, is, is that the message? Is that what they're trying to say? I don't know. I don't know. I mean, maybe. But I'm not going to. 
I'm not gonna do it. You know, I, I think if you know, if you can see through the shit, right? And you can see things, then you have a responsibility. This is this is the the spiritual war, man. You know, you, you never want to be in a situation down the road where you're like, well, yeah, I mean, Satan was taking everything over, but you know, he's really strong, so we didn't do anything. What, are you gonna be at the Hawaiian Islands, do nothing? No, you, you can't, you can't do that. You have to do something no matter the cost, you know, you have to. And if that means you're, you get marched up to the, uh, to the guillotine and the Freemason with this faggy little apron there tells you to, uh, to renounce Jesus and, and you don't, you say, I am he, and they cut your head off. That's fine. If that's what I'm here for, that's fine. I'm down for whatever. I'm not... There's nothing... This, this whole thing is nothing. This whole little world is nothing. It's a, it's a little exercise. We could, be have, we could be in 10 of these other things right now. You know, our consciousness is so big. Uh, we don't know where it ends, you know? But I know for a fact, this place ain't it. This is, this is a little thing. You don't want to make the wrong decision here. You don't want to make the wrong decision, you know, because it stays with you, you know, or it affects, affects you as you go on, and you're going to go on forever, you're an eternal being, you're never going to die, and although it isn't like where you go on to, there, there is no time, so it's not like you're like, oh, you're going to be thinking about it a long time, you're not, because time only exists here in this, this area here. So, but I think in some way it'll diminish you. In some way, you'll come to regret it. You, you know what's right, right? And you know what's wrong. None of this gray area bullshit. A lot of occultists will tell you like, oh, the, 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 the true enlightened man is beyond good and evil. No, no. So that, what that tells me is what we can fuck kids sometimes. Is that what that means? It's okay to do that sometimes? No, no, it's never okay to do that. You did that whole thing, that whole gray area, you know, trying to get the culture into the idea of like complicated, like gray area heroes or the anti-hero. That just says to me, you want to fuck kids. That, that's, that's it. That's it. There, there, there's nothing, there is no give and take there. You know what's right. You know what's wrong. If you can't see good and evil, then you're just a fucking robot. And uh, and you don't count anyway. So stay out of stay out of all this. You don't you you, you don't belong in this. You guys do though. Thanks for dropping by. Don't blame the teacher. Blame the school.